Hi, I'm Jeff Peters for Gamer Pops, and today we're looking at Rabbit's Land for the Wii U. Uh, sort of a party game, much in the same veins as Mario Party, the Mario Party series. Uh, what you see there in the first uh, menu there is all the different game modes, which is basically about the board game, the mini games, and some one-on-one -on -one stuff. Now here, this is uh, letting you pick the number of players. You're going to have anywhere from 1 to 4. We're going to go 2, and we can choose 10 to 20 trophy, Ten or 20 trophies as the winning number. Okay, so the game started now. And here's the game board. The things in, to keep in mind, this is the this is pretty much it. It's just there's just one game board that comes with the game, not multiple game board options with different locations like you get in Mario Party uh, or Wii Party. And this is really the only game mode besides being able to play you know, two-player mini games. Uh, just because of the way it's set up. So there's no extra modes really or anything like that. You can just either play the mini games or this one board game. So Malcolm has landed on a mini game space, which launches him into the first mini game we'll check out here. And you're going to notice that even though there are four players, we have only two players involved in this mini game. This is called Ghost Suck. This is actually a cooperative game. So there's three trophies on the line for both players. And before each mini game, you're going to have a tutorial for each person that tells you. It's important to note every single mini game is a two player mini game. Uh, one person will, will have the gamepad, and the other person will use a Wiimote and Nunchuck combination. That's it. Even though there are four players, you'll only ever have two involved in a minigame at any given time when you're playing them. Which doesn't really work as well. I mean, it's okay. It works, but it, you, can, you have two people who are going to sit there doing nothing, basically, while this is happening. And we're just going to see example. Well, obviously, one person has the gamepad, and they're seeing a little differently. They're uncovering the ghosts, and it's up to me to actually suck them in with a vacuum. But this two-player uh, minigame thing, there, unfortunately, it leaves two people sitting there watching. Whereas with most other party games, you're, you're going to have everybody involved. You're going to get all four players involved. And that's one of the weak parts of the game, is that because they, for whatever reason, whether they rushed it to lodge or something else, I don't know, but they... they they just didn't put in any four-party games. They should have put four-party games in this because the last thing you want in a party game is people sitting around doing nothing. Okay, so with that minigame down, it's time for everyone to take their reward. As you can see, Malcolm, who played with me, gets his three trophies, and because it was a co-op mini minigame, I get my three trophies as well, which is very nice. So now it's on to the next person's turn. This is a computer-generated character, so if you don't have four people, it'll it'll always be a four-player game. It'll fill out the rest with two AI bots, basically. So in this case, you get a present. This is one of the other spaces on the board. Basically, it's like an item. And a lot of times you get things like another turn, or a, a loaded dice, or a bigger number dice, that type of thing. That's what you're going to see here. And of course, the rabbits with their funniness they'll eat the presents and do all that other kind of stuff. So we're going to talk about the minigame. This one here is a, um, a one versus one minigame. And again, this is where I think they dropped the ball though because there were, there's so much potential for one versus three minigames and other things like that that we could that they could have rolled with. But again, that's a, that was a design choice, not one that I would particularly have made that I like to see, but it is what it is. So th this minigame, this is actually a rhythm game. So this was what Malcolm was looking at. I was the guy who's behind the, the, the cart here. And Malcolm is basically shaking the nunchuck on the left and the Wiimote on the right in time to the music. And whatever he does, it fires fireballs at me. And if he hits me enough times, he wins. If I survive the timer, I win. And in this case, as you can see, Malcolm won because I couldn't avoid enough fireballs. Here's another example of a mini game. Uh, this particular one, this shows a little bit of the silliness and maybe toilet type humor. As you can see, he's sticking his butt in our face and he's getting whacked for it. And this, in this particular game, basically, I'm trying to hit as many rabbits onto his little submarine as I can. He defends by being able to see them. So, he, you see, he blows up there because he's not seeing them. He's actually turning the Wii U gamepad to be able to see this. Now there, see that one didn't hit because he was able to see it. Now what I try to do is I try to jump back and forth between stations, trying to confuse them so I can whack him with these rabbits. Here's another mini game example. Um, again, the lot of explosions in this game. You see, he's trying to actually blow into the Wii, 
the Wii U gamepad's microphone to try and blow penguins towards me. Now let's move on to something a little bit different. The game also features something called quizzes. And the way these quizzes work is basically the person lands on space gets asked a random trivia question. It could be about anything, typically human or rabbit based though. And if I get it right, I get two trophies. And the other players get to bet on whether they got I got the question right or not. And if they guess right, then they get one trophy each. So in this case, what part of a human's brightest? I say the brain. Sometimes they're real questions, sometimes they're more silly like this. Now Malcolm is going to choose with the Wiimote whether he thinks I got the question right or not. And the same thing for the computer controlled opponents. Now we're gonna check the answer. Yay, I got it right for once. <laughs> and to the winners go the spoils. I get two trophies and everyone apparently had no faith in my ability to know trivia and I'm the only one who gets trophies. That serves them right. Let me show you something else. This is one of those more random things that gets you. Uh, we've activated a bomb earlier on and it's one of those things, you see this in Mario Party 2 where it'll count down as people move spaces and the person who's unlucky enough to be under the bomb when it goes off which in this case was me, gets blown up and loses trophies. This is a, one example of some of the random things you're gonna see in this game. Again, not unlike what you would see in other party games. Okay, let's go to the end game now. Uh, basically, the way you win is the same, since it's the same game all the time. Uh, once you get to the prescribed number of trophies, you've gotta get to the middle. And in this case, Malcolm was pretty much already there. Any role was gonna do it. And congratulations, a winner is you, Malcolm very happy about it. He was very happy about this. And then this is the part of the game where they summarize how you did with a little bit of silliness at the end. A lot, a lot of like rabbit type silliness. You're gonna ex the kind of stuff you expect to see on this type of game. So overall, it's a solid party game, but I just wish there had been more variety to it. More than one board, a few other different types of challenges, and really the, the, the non-inclusion of all four players in the mini games was just a terrible oversight, really. So it's one that holds this game back from being better than it could have been. And with that, I'm Jeff Pierce for Gamer Pops. Thanks for watching.